Welcome to the Karma Yoga Center of Chemical Astrology Report. This time I'm coming from Japan. We're outside of Hiroshima on the island of Miyajama. I don't think I said it right. Um, it's where the largest Otoro Gate is, and it's a national or world rather heritage site. And as I mentioned, it's just outside of Hiroshima, and I think that's pretty significant for the backdrop to this report because one of the big things that's happening is Jupiter and the Sun almost exactly conjunct. They're uh, three degrees apart from each other in the sign of Sagittarius. And just a little bit over from them is Mercury. And that'll be the biggest part of the report I'd like to talk about. But of course, this is the full moon report. And the moon is full in the sign of Gemini at zero degrees. And also we have Venus, um, direct now and she is in the sign of Libra, her home sign. Jupiter is also at home in Sagittarius and we have Mars has moved into Pisces real close to um, Neptune and that's an interesting piece and Mars is also squaring Jupiter so we'll talk about that and we have Uranus opposite of Venus and I believe I mentioned that Mercury is retrograde, but if I didn't, Mercury is retrograde. So those are the things I want to tackle um, real quickly here in this report. Going back to the full moon, the full moon in Gemini is at zero degrees. That means it's at the very, very beginning of the sign, and it will move through the sign of Gemini and onward. But it's a kind of auspicious zero point because it's a fresh new beginning almost like the way we would think of a new moon how the new moon makes us feel like it's a fresh start and it is a fresh start but here we are with the moon at its fullest at zero degrees so there's this abundance at a fresh start and i kind of like to frame it like that it's a good time for a full fresh start of something in our lives another um interesting piece about the full moon in Gemini is it's the Gemini is the curiosity um, sign it wants to know things it likes to learn things so we have this big full ripe luminous energy this big celestial body that's showcasing where we might need to put a spotlight on some truth so anywhere that you are wanting to know more see more maybe even about your own self um, take a look at that if the time is right. So the, the big showcase, or what I said, the uh, reason I think Hiroshima would be a great backdrop for this particular report is Jupiter and the Sun so close together in the sign of Sagittarius with Mercury in balance. So Sagittarius is the fire sign. It's the truth seeker. It's the vision quester. It draws back the arrow and it wants to shoot where it needs to go. It, it kind of scopes things out, said, let's go here, and it points and shoots. Well, Jupiter is this big gaseous ball, the largest one, as you know, and the sun is right next to it. In fact, some people say that um, if you could light a match to Jupiter, it would be the power of uh, 10,000 suns. It would be as bright as 10,000 suns. That's just huge for me to think about. And after having just toured, um, the A-Dome in the Memorial Park in Hiroshima and seeing the structure of that building, the only remaining building um, from the Hiroshima atomic bomb, it kind of puts into perspective how potent the energy is right now with that combustible energy uh, possibility. It seems a lot to me like it could have that um, Hiroshima effect if we don't mind our words. With Mercury there retrograde, which already kind of trips us up a little bit with our communication, with our technology, with transportation, and then it's so close to these two big balls of gas. Um, the sun, of course, is our outward expression, how we show up in the world, and if we've got this big guru, teacher, giant ball of fire, not lit, next to it. There's potential for some big explosion. So mindful of our words, what I'd like to say in the nutshell is keep your big mouth shut. Might be a good motto for this time right now. Jupiter is home in the sign of Sagittarius. So that gives it a little bit more power because it feels comfortable. It also makes it let its guard down a little bit. 
if you can use that metaphor. So we might normally be the big guru teacher. Um, we might have our wisdom in check. We might carry ourselves in that um, imperial manner as uh, Jupiter is known to show, he's Zeus. But when he's home, he gets in his socks, he's kind of lounging and um, might let his guard down. And so that sneaky, mercurial, mercury figure who's retrograde um, could poke and prod and make things happen a little bit. So just really extra cautious about what you say and what you do, how you're using your teachings with others, making sure that it's not big judgment and not um, big manipulation and big control on people and putting it into check um, because with that sun next to it, we could use our power to push and prod things into the way we want it to work for us. And if it's not for the highest good, then I would say step back. It's important to step back and take a look at how we are using our power. But that said, here's a lineup, Mercury, Jupiter, and the sun ready to use big power. Use this force for good. Use the power of the big wisdom of the teacher at home and the outward expression of how we show ourselves the sun and our ability to talk slightly slowed down and being more discerning of our words. This is a great chance to write some poetry, get a book, write that speech, get that paper done, articulate something that's important to somebody who's important, using your wisdom in its highest way to express who you are would be the positive side of that particular lineup. I mentioned Venus is home in Libra and unlike Jupiter, how I um, portrayed her as kind of messy in, or portrayed him messy in his softs, um, I put Venus in Libra as more of a refined feminine uh, energy at home, comfortable, and of course Libra is relationship and balance, and the two of them together is balanced relationships, and she's direct after being retrograde, and she's cruising back towards Scorpio on her path. She's morning star in the morning, take a look at her, and what I feel like this means to us, the astrology broke down, is be at home in your heart. Be at home and comfortable in your relationships. Uh, use that retrograde mercury to slowly discuss the things that aren't serving you in the highest way. And then um, have balance in that relationship. I mentioned Uranus is opposite side of uh, Venus. And I always keep my eye on Uncle Uranus because he's that random fireball that could come roaring in with a lightning bolt and shock things a little bit. He's Mr. Spontaneity. So that could be good. Maybe a little lightning bolt into the love life um, could shake things up a little bit too, especially with Mercury retrograde. So just being cautious in that way. But I feel like there could be big boon in romance. There could be a little spark that ignites in the home front of love. And also Venus represents abundance. So there could also have that lightning bolt maybe um, giving a little boost to the bank account but it could also drain it too. So just having awareness of those things. Um, I mentioned that Mars is in the sign of Pisces. That's uh, a little out of Mars' comfort zone. This is um, home base is Aries, which is a fire sign and he's swimming in the murky unknown, real close to the big dog, Neptune. And so that's kind of like going swimming with the sharks. And so he's on guard, plus he's squaring Jupiter. And I think it's a good, like, dousing the fire of Mars a little bit in that Neptune energy of um, Pisces. But I also feel like when somebody is scared or uncertain, they get really defensive and um, ready to pounce. And so there's potential for that. Your warrior could be on guard, looking around, a little uncertain. And if he turns and faces off to Jupiter, Mars is the warrior, Jupiter is the big gaseous ball guru, there could be an explosion there too. And again, with Mercury retrograde, it just heightens that potential. So uh, best wishes at this kind of charged up, uh, perhaps atomic bomb kind of time, but it could also be um, as the memorial uh, was placed years later to remind us that peace is the way and to keep peace as a um, 
forward motion energy. So when we are about to open our big fat mouth, just watch our words and see where peace can come from the lips. Blessings and Namaste.